Throughout his career, the philosopher and novelist Albert Camus outlined two ways to commit suicide. The first is your obvious run-of-the-mill suicide, where you physically take your life. And the second is what Camus called philosophical suicide, which is essentially not acknowledging the absurd. In this video, we'll get into Camus' approach for how to avoid philosophical suicide, and in turn, how that gives us a positive attitude toward life. But before we get into Camus' strategy for how to avoid a philosophical suicide, let's first get into the question we're all asking here. What the heck is the absurd? Let me explain it to you through a story. I have a dog named Puck, and every morning I invite Puck to check the mail with me, which is like asking the average American if they want coffee. And once outside, it's the same routine, stopping at the same tree to mark his territory, but with only about a quarter of what's in the tank, and then running 20 meters over to our mailbox, where he happily unloads the rest of his bladder. Then he reels back with a bark and charges for the door, a movement that quickly winds down into this happy-go-lucky trot. And this happens every day with the same enthusiasm. And some of you might be nodding your head at this, knowing exactly what I'm talking about, having seen it in your own dog. But have you ever thought about why they do this? Well, undoubtedly, the dog feels some sense of responsibility. He thinks that it's his duty to protect this general area next to the orange painted structure he knows is home. Which I guess is cute on a pet level, but if we examine this belief in light of what we know on a human level, it is utterly absurd. Utterly absurd. And I say this in the sense that Camus saw it. To Camus, the existential absurd is this gross mismatch between what seems all important and what's actually the case. So taking our example, it's Puck's delusional belief of the all importance of marking his territory contrasted with the actual state of affairs, that peeing on a mailbox in reality isn't a protective measure. Huh? So what Camus pointed out is that humans are just like dogs in this way. It starts with first taking our cultural norms for granted. We mow the lawn when it gets too long. We go in number two in a clay bowl, half filled with water. We put our wallets in our back pocket, watch TV in the living room, have sex in the bedroom. We also reserve a stock of unoriginal sayings. A funeral calls for, I'm sorry for your loss. And when being asked how we are, it's always good. Again, we don't question these sets of cultural behaviors. But when we zoom out and view human life with the higher perspective of philosophy, objectively, from the universe's standpoint, we can see that nothing we do in our ordinary lives makes any sense. This is because our subjective estimations, what we think is good, bad, or worthy of pursuit, are in vain to an objective view of our role in an indifferent universe. We're basically in Puck's position and don't even know it. But unlike Puck, we don't have to go on in ignorance. We can actually live while knowing just how absurd our behavior is in the grand scheme of things. And to do so is what Camus thought it meant to avoid philosophical suicide. Well, almost. This is at least the first part of it. It's knowing the absurd. But the second part, and the most important part, is our attitude toward life despite the absurd. In his book, The Myth of Sisyphus, Camus tells the story of a king who Zeus tricks into rolling a boulder up a hill only to have it, by his enchantment, roll back down the hill, so that Sisyphus can again roll it back up the hill, and so on for forever. But Camus meant for the story to be an exaggerative metaphor that reflects the reality of our lives, because, as we've covered, our lives are essentially pointless. However, despite that reality that we find ourselves in, it is up to us to respond in the same manner that Sisyphus did, which is to willingly take on the pointlessness of our existence, albeit in revolt. The book finishes up like this. The struggle itself is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Therefore, Camus encourages us to act in a way that affirms life despite its absurdity. And so, whatever we do, we do it with a spirit of rebellion, as if to honestly tell the universe, Ah, fuck you. And I'm here, and I'm going to make the most of it.